Uh, Houston, we have a word problem. Apollo 15 followed Apollo 14. Apollo 15, pretty significant mission featuring the lunar roving vehicle. The crew was made of astronauts Scott, Warden, and Irwin. The Lion Brothers version of their patch, the company that made some uh, unique details in the vintage patches from the day, and they had stitched in a 15 at the base of the patch here. Another interesting feature of the Apollo 15 patch on all of them is how the artist put the 15 into the silhouettes here of the craters, or the shadow of the craters. So the Roman, Roman numeral X and Roman numeral V for 15. Pretty clever. On the 40th anniversary of the Apollo 15 mission, this commemorative patch was done and all three of the astronauts had a connection to the United States Air Force. The National Museum of the Air Force is on this memorial patch as the command service module named the Endeavour is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Wouldn't this have been an interesting encounter for the Apollo 15 crew? So this is the command service module Endeavour, and their lunar module was named Falcon. It was the Falcon because the United States Air Force Academy mascot is a Falcon. There was a new lunar Apollo suit made for the Apollo 15 mission. And the major thing to focus in on this change is this joint at the waist that allowed the astronauts to be able to bend completely over as they were going to have to sit in the lunar rover. The rover had been a concept early on in NASA, and the original idea was this MOLAB, a mobile laboratory, which kind of reminds me of the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. This concept was cancelled in 1968. So you can see the work in getting us to the moon was an ongoing process. This turned out to be the final design for the Apollo 15 mission for the lunar rover vehicle. And here it is on the surface of the moon. And we do have in your Alpha Mix appendix for your reference the LRV, the Lunar Roving Vehicle, which often is dubbed the Lunar Rover. So the first lunar rover driven by humans on the moon, so not remotely operated from Earth, but physically driven by a human, is an accomplishment for the United States. I will show you a clip from the history's most moment for the lunar rover space car. When it comes to space cars, the first is still the best. The lunar rover, the most innovative automobile in the universe. The barren, desolate landscape of the moon, a place of mystery and wonder. But early exploration of the Earth's celestial neighbor could offer only a tantalizing glimpse of the secrets it may hold. Astronauts, confined by bulky spacesuits and a low gravity atmosphere, could walk only short distances, limiting their exploration capabilities. NASA's answer? The ultimate SUV. The Lunar Rover. But building this space car was no easy task. NASA engineers had to design something that was small enough to fit into a spacecraft, yet large enough and strong enough to meet the demands of the moon, driving over big rocks and around craters. The end product was an aluminum-framed, six-foot-wide space dune buggy. It came equipped with tires made out of specially coated piano wire. These space tires absorbed more shock than Earth tires, so the rover wouldn't bounce too high in the low gravity. Able to reach speeds of up to 12 kilometers an hour, astronauts could travel as far as nine miles during missions. But as fun as it may look, off-roading on the moon was not without risk. 
A mechanical breakdown could have stranded astronauts miles from the safety of the lunar lander. To guard against this, the two-seat rover was engineered with redundant, hopefully fail-safe systems. The lunar roving vehicle had four motors. Each wheel had its own electric motor so that uh, if one were to fail, they could just disconnect that one and continue on well, with the other motors. But there were no tragic accidents. And indeed, the lunar rover greatly expanded astronauts' ability to explore the moon. Though it weighed only 462 pounds, the rover could carry twice its weight in passengers and cargo. The lunar rover was left on the moon after its last mission in 1972. And there it will remain, perhaps for thousands of years. Like the greatest of inventions, it truly stands the test of time. If you want to look at all the various details and specs of the lunar rover for Apollo 15, give you a sense of scale. This would be the Falcon and the lunar rover. And you might ask, I hope you might be asking, how on earth do you get the lunar rover to the moon? Well, it was packed in this part of the lunar descent vehicle, and it basically unfolded itself. So you had these kind of like tow ropes that you would very gently uh, pull on the vehicle, and it would unfold. And a very delicate operation that the astronauts, of course, practice and practice and practice on Earth. And we'll show you some footage of the retrieval of a lunar roving vehicle. Here we go. Your cartoonists love to take advantage of the fact that there is a vehicle on the surface of the moon that is drivable. Best forgotten moments in the history of lunar exploration. I can't drive stick shift either. A uh, skill some people don't have, some obviously do, and it's uh, always to your advantage to have more skills in your skill set in life. That's not good. That's not good. Astronaut Irwin saluting the flag at the Hadley Apennine landing site. You can see the lunar rover over to the side here. And from the lunar prospector, we see the descent stage, the Falcon, and the lunar rover over here. 
Now this image isn't from the Lunar Prospector. This was taken by the astronaut himself. This is a small little statuette here of aluminum called the Fallen Astronaut, and a plaque here that has the 14 known names of astronauts and cosmonauts who had died in the efforts of exploring space. Because of a camera left out by the lunar rover, we were able to film and see the blast-off of the Falcon lunar module to return to rendezvous with the command service module Endeavour. Astronaut Warden is doing the first ever deep space EVA, a walk in space that is incredibly far from Earth. He's about a quarter million miles from Earth, hence a deep space EVA rather than a spacewalk just barely above the Earth's atmosphere. Here we have an image of the moon as the Apollo 15 astronauts are heading away from the moon and back to Earth. And one of their parachutes uh, failed upon re-entry, which is perfectly fine because you really only need two to land. They always put a redundant, a third fail-safe parachute. So there was no hiccups or any discomfort really from the astronauts because of a failed parachute. You only really need the two here. And there's the astronauts being safely recovered. Bring it in to the Apollo 15 mission. The first orbit maintained around another planet happens to be Mars by the Mariner 9 in November 71. And you'll see we're going to be putting the check mark here for the United States. We also have the first impact into Mars, so the Mars 2 spacecraft crashing into the surface of Mars. The Mars 2 vehicle is a Soviet craft, so the check mark for the first impact on Mars by a spacecraft to the Soviet Union. And then shortly after that, the first soft Mars landings, not crashing into the surface, and the first signals and photos from Mars. So the check mark will go for the Soviet Union. And this page is in your notebook so that you can get a sense of uh, the various craft that have explored Mars. Right here highlighting the Mars 3. The Mars 2 vehicle looks just the same.